Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and I'm back with the uh, double VRM failure RTX 3090 vision card here. Um, as I've literally just sort of stopped the sort of diagnostic part of the soldering process on this on this GPU, so it's not fixed yet. Um, but the thing is, like, I have all the inductors lifted, so or, all the suspicious, uh, like the all of the inductors for the suspicious phases are now lifted. So. Um, yeah, also the card is very hot as I literally just took it off of the hot plate. So as you can see, like this inductor, you know, is lifted, Th this inductor is lifted, so th these are both disconnected. Um, all of the, because these two phases, um, these two power stages right here, which connect to these two inductors, those are connected to that fuse over here that's shorted out, uh, or, well, that fuse that, you know, popped. Um, then on the other side we have this one's lifted, this one's lifted, this one's lifted, right? Uh, these three also are connected to this fuse over here. And then we have that one memory phase, which is like, which as you can see, I've already removed that memory power stage because yeah, that, that was the shorted power stage. That one was really easy to identify. So that power stage was connected to this fuse. This fuse is obviously blown. Um, and that power stage is now disconnected. Um, and th there's no more short circuit on that fuse uh, right now. So if I uh, measure that fuse, um, if we go to our display output, and I measure across that fuse, we can see we have a resistance in the kilo ohms range, and that is a perfectly normal resistance to have on the 12 volt uh, PCIe, like the 12 volt power plane coming off of the PCIe slot. Um, so th this is good. So we've removed the short circuit that uh, caused this fuse to blow. Um, I don't know if the memory chip survived yet. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out when I try to turn the card on. But uh, now the bigger concern is uh, the other fuse, because this fuse over here still looks very shorted out. And so I figured I'd show you uh, what you need to do when you've sort of lifted all of the inductors like I have, right? Like I've lifted every single phase that's connected to that shorted out fuse, um, and yet that fuse is still shorted. So what do? So in this scenario, what you do is you actually check the pad for the, the switch node pad, right? So you can see over there, and you put your probe like that, and yeah, that's bad. Um, that tells us this power stage is shorted switch node to ground. Uh, if we check this power stage, that one's healthy. It's got 22 kilo ohms. Now on the other side, we've got this power stage and it's got 22 kilo ohms as well. And then this power stage has 13 kilo ohms because that power stage runs in parallel with this power stage. So these two power stages share a current sense circuit. And since this card uses a UP9511 for its V-Core, at least I think it does, I've not bothered to check. Uh... Well, it doesn't really matter that much. The, the main point is the card is probably using DC resistance of the inductors for current sensing. And the way that circuitry works is the uh, controller is basically monitoring the voltage on the switch node, and it's monitoring the voltage on the output on the other side of the uh, on the output side of the inductor. And if you have two power stages in parallel in one phase with the, uh, in one phase, then uh, basically that controller is connected to the switch node switch nodes of both phases at the same time. And so consequently, uh, the resistance is lower, right? Like we, we get this 13 kilo ohms of resistance to ground instead of the, the 22 kilo ohms of resistance that you see on like this, this phase because this phase has one power stage in it. And then like this phase also has just one power stage in it. And then this phase over here, uh, yeah, this, this phase blew up. So th this power stage got to go. Uh, that guy's going to go and then we should no longer have any short circuit on the card. And I just figured I'd show you this because... Uh, you know, like, I don't, like, usually, I, I say in the probing process, like, yeah, you lift the inductors and that'll help you figure out which phase is shorted out. And I just figured I'd show you, uh, like, what, what the actual process is behind figuring out which phase is shorted out. So you just go switch node to ground, and that's, that's shorted, this isn't. Um, so that's kind of that. And if you lifted all of the inductors off, then you could, like, check all of them, and basically any of the phases that don't have a weird, weird like, uh, two power stages parallel thing going on, uh, those would be the same resistance as, like, this phase and this phase. But obviously there's no point lifting all of them, because we knew on this, on this fuse I knew it was a memory failure, memory VRM failure, and on this fuse we knew it was a vCore VRM failure, so we didn't have to worry about anything else. Um, anyway, also if you remove the power stage, uh, the switch node will be completely disconnect, uh, should be, like, yeah, should should have some resistance. So, 
evidently I was having uh, contact issues. So that has three kilo ohms on it. And basically you're just measuring the uh, resistance of the current sensing circuitry in that scenario when there's when there's no power stage there. So it's kind of interesting though, that's just three kilo ohms. Like it's not insanely low, but yeah, I, I would have thought it might have been something a bit higher, but three kilo ohms is a reasonable resistance depending on how exactly the current sensing circuitry is set up. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's that's it for this video. Um, like I just wanted to show you the, the process of like, you know, when you lift the inductors, what do you actually do? Especially if you lift off all the inductors and the fuse is still shorted, right? So yeah, um, that's it uh, for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with uh, actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon, there's a link to that down in the description. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch, hoodies, uh, that kind of thing. And then I also have a band camp where I have like industrial metal background noise type stuff. So if you'd like to check that out, there's a link to that in the description below as well. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.